All right, let's get started and we get that one monitor turned on. Good evening and welcome to the January 18th, 2024 regular meeting of the San Diego Community Power Board of Directors, our first meeting for the 2024 calendar year and Happy New Year to everybody, both uh, uh, my fellow board members as well as staff. I'm Joel Acaba, Chair of the Board and the Representative for the City of San Diego. We welcome the members of the public, the Community Power staff and the board members joining us in person today. I will now call the January 18th, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of Directors the San Diego Community Power to order. Megan, will you please call the roll? Director Yamani? Here. Director Henze? Here. Director Barrett? Here. Director Aguirre? Here. Director McCann? Present. Vice Chair Lawson Reamer? Chair LaCava? Present. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. So at this moment, why don't we understand if you're able, please face the flag. Hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the land of, of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it demands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, a forum is again present. Next up on the agenda is special presentations, introductions. Uh, we uh, come to do a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that this meeting is taking place on the land of the original inhabitants of the greater San Diego region. A land acknowledgement is a critical step towards working with native communities to create meaningful partnerships, inclusion, and the stewardship and protection of their cultural resources and homelands. Let's pause for a moment to honor these ancestral grounds that were the traditional lands of the Kumai. Next, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome new members to the community power team. Isabella Kroll yeah. and Michelle Porras and Elaine Metzda. We welcome oh. have you come up to the dais. Oh. Say a few words. Good evening, Chair LaCava and prestigious Board of Directors. My name is Michelle Porras, and I'm the new Senior Executive Assistant supporting the C-Suite, Karen, Jack, and Eric. The majority of my career was spent at the City of San Diego, where I served several mayoral administrations, most recently Mayor Todd Gloria as his Director of Scheduling. I am so thrilled and excited to join this team of dynamic, talented, and creative humans to help push San Diego community powers mission, vision, values, and goals. Please reach out to me at any time if I could be of further assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board members. My name is Isabella Kral. I am the new contract management associate on the power services team. Um, I started back in November, but this is the first board meeting I was able to attend due to, to, to some other conflicts. So I appreciate you having me. I am um, living in San Diego now, more than 10 years. Um, I have a law degree from the University of San Diego, so I have a JD under my wing, um, and I'm just really excited to be here and to be part of San Diego Community Power. I think it's an organization that I'm really proud to be a part of. Great. Thank you both. We welcome you aboard. It's a great organization. And Elaine is not here this evening. You can certainly give her a chance. Next week or next month, excuse me. So, with that, I will now turn it over to Director McCann for a special presentation. Thank you very much, um, uh, Chair. I just wanted to make sure that we're uh, recognizing uh, one of our CIC members uh, from Chula Vista, and um, we very much appreciate um, her husband being here and Caroline Schofield. Um, we're going to be providing her 
with a proclamation. And uh, Carolyn has been ex an extraordinary volunteer and community member in the city of Chula Vista and in the field of sustainability. As a resident of Chula Vista, she was very involved with the Sustainability Commission at the city of Chula Vista and even received an award for the commission cleanup as a clean champion. After the COVID year, she received this award for her efforts and award towards climate actions. She was very involved with SD350, a climate action group, both in San Diego and Chula Vista. Caroline was a youth organizer for the Youth Climate March and was able to inspire several students from Hilltop High School, Otay Ranch High School, and Bonita Vista High School. Mrs. Schofield has worked tirelessly <clears throat> to ensure that we are taking care of our planet and make sure that our youth continues those efforts. We are extremely grateful for her involvement and her dedication to her community and the San Diego Community Power. Mr. Chair? Uh, thank you, Mayor McCann, for those powerful words. Um, I believe we have Mr. Schofield might want to come up and say a few words. The dais on this side? Yes. Sorry. Okay, um, this is this working? Well, I can, <clears throat> can you hear me way over there easily? I was an ESL teacher. <clears throat> so I learned eventually how to project. <laughs> and it's good I'm standing here instead of sitting there because I could talk a long time. <laughs> anyway, I, I want to thank you personally, but Carolyn wants to thank you very much for this. Proclamation. Um, I want to thank the board, the uh, advisory committee, and also the staff. Um, we have new people on the staff. It's a wonderful staff. From what I people I've met and the people I've talked to, and Carolyn has said it over and over again. So SDCP is a great organization. Uh, it's a very collaborative organization, and that was one of her main themes was to, to see that everyone was working together. And she just wants to thank you for this. Um, it was <clears throat> very educational, it was fun. And this is from, from her point of view, educational, it was fun, it was a lot of hard work, but uh, it was an honor for her to participate in this organization. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and just to add to the Mayor McCann's words, there is nothing more powerful in the advocacy for what we're trying to do than those who would give up their personal time, tribute their, their thoughts, their knowledge, their expertise in these conversations. So in addition to the proclamation, please extend our thank you for the good work that she's done um, that has helped us be a better organization. What happened? Want to do a picture? No. Oh, yeah. Tell me where to go. Right there, you're perfect. That worked. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Please give them our best. We love her very much. Uh, thank you, Mayor Cap, for bringing that to, to our attention. Thank you, Chair, for doing the proclamation. So next, uh, back to the agenda. Are there any items to be added 
withdrawn or reordered on the effects. It's not hearing any. I'm sorry, there is no public comment. Okay. Uh, is there any no changes to the agenda? Either. And there's no, oh, sorry, no changes to the agenda. Um, and I think I have the answer, but we have an opportunity to take up not agenda public comment. If there was any comment submitted uh, by written means, uh, they were shared with the board um, and also posted on the website. And Megan, just to confirm, we do not have any not agenda public comment. That is correct. And we have no hands raised at this time either. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Now move on to the consent agenda. Uh, we have 12 items, uh, including the approval of the December 14th minutes, and then the regular receiving files of the Treasury Support Programs, Power Services, Human Resources, Customer Operations, Marketing, Public Relations, Government Affairs, the Community Advisory Committee, Regulatory and Legislative Affairs, plus uh, an amendment to Brentech uh, PSA for the technical work that we that they provide, approval of the Marketing Community Initiative Partnership Agreement with TGNA and approval of amendments to the CAC scope of work and policies and procedures. So first, are there any uh, items that the directors would like to pull from consent? Not hearing any. Uh, Megan, do we have any public comment on the consent agenda? There are no public comments. All right. So at this point, I would entertain a motion uh, by, the board, by the board to move the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you. And come on. All right. Uh, with a motion by Director McGann and a second by Director Yamani. Uh, oh, actually, we have a director remote, so we actually have to do a roll call. Megan? Apologies. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let legal counsel. Did you want to mention AB 2449? Uh, yes, I believe. Um, Vice Chair Lawson Reamer is joining the meeting virtually under just cause. Um, I believe that there's been a child care issue that you would just um, have to note that uh, just came up. And um, um, if you could just announce the, the reason for your appearing virtually and if there's anyone um, in the room that you and what yep. the is. Uh, no, yes, I have a child care issue, and um, no one in the room is above the age of four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we still need to do the roll call. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. We just needed that announcement. Okay. Thank you. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Aye. Director Henry, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Aguirre, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Vice Chair Lawson Weimer, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Chair LaCava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all directors voting yes. Okay. Well, we got through that. So we'll move right on to item 13, uh, which is the election of officers for calendar year 2024. Joint power agreement calls for the chair and the vice chair election at the first regular meeting of the board each year. Processes to take nominations and seconds from the floor for the chair position from the directors and then take a vote. Board will then take nominations and seconds for the vice chair position with a separate vote. <laughs> and we will go to public comment first and then turn it over to the board for nominations and a motion. We have any public comment, Megan? There are no public comments. All right. So I'll turn it over to my fellow board members for comments and a motion, and we will do separate motions for the chair and the vice chair. Here, Lakava, I would um, support you, and so I would make a motion to uh, re-elect board member Chair Lakava for the to be the chair in twenty twenty two. So moved. Twenty twenty four. Excuse me. Second. Okay. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm skipping there, but uh, so. Thank you for that. Um, certainly eager to serve um, given the past year and with fabulous board of directors here working together. Um, certainly has been an honor uh, and certainly amazed by the work that we have done now in our what, fourth year or our fifth year. Yeah. Uh, over a million customers, expanding staff every month or staff come online. 
Uh, and there's a lot of good work done by the staff, which also makes it much easier to chair uh, this organization and this particular board. So looking forward to the good work we're going to do in 2024. So Megan, would you please call the roll vote? Uh, Chair, we, uh, Vice Chair, your last rumor does have her hand raised. Oh, I yes. There's one. Um, I was just going to second the nomination and just uh, say how much I appreciate your leadership and appreciate working with you. Okay. I'll try to keep a sharper eye on the screen as well. So, <laughs> but thank you for that. Uh, so now, Megan, please call the vote. Uh, Director Yamani, how do you vote? Yes. Director Henvey, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Geary, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair Lawson Raymer, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Chair LaCoppa, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all directors voting yes. Okay, next up is Vice Chair. Happy to make a motion to support um, Super Board Member Tara Lawson Remor for Vice Chair. I'll second the motion. Uh, did you want to make a comment, Vice Chair? You take your hand out. Okay. Oops, I don't have my speaker up. Um, no public comment, I assume, on this one either. No, there's no public comment. Okay. So we have a motion by member Aguirre and a second by member Hinsey. Uh, if there's no other comments, please call the roll. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Yes. Director Hinsey, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Aguirre, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair Lawson Reamer, how do you vote? Aye. Chair LaCava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all directors voting yes. Uh, Vice Chair, did you want to make a comment or was there somebody in the room objecting uh, to your? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was an extra vote there. Yeah, so. All right. Thank you. Or her alternate. Or her alternate. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Uh, all seriousness. Uh, again, thank you for the support of the board member. We'll move right on to uh, item 14, which is approval of the San Diego Community Powers 2024 rate schedule. I'll turn it over to Lucas Uto and Tim. Megalamot? No. Okay. Good evening. I'm Karen Burns, the Chief Executive Officer of San Diego Community Power. I want to thank our board of directors and the members of the public who are participating in our meeting today. This item is the most important one we bring before you all year. The electricity rates we set tonight affect not only San Diego Community Power customers, but stakeholders across the region. We recognize that San Diego in 2023 earned the unenviable title by the US News and World Report as the most expensive place to live in the United States. And that too many San Diegans are struggling to pay their bills, put food on the table, and cover their basic costs of living. The rates we set have an impact on everyone because in this modern world, clean electricity is almost as important as clean water and clean air. We use it to do our work, power our homes, and feed our families. Our customers also count on us to bring competition and transparency to the marketplace to drive down electricity costs and give people the financial ability to thrive in our region. We take that responsibility extremely seriously. For this reason, I'm pleased today to recommend rates for next year that will create double digit savings or about 18% on average year over year rate relief for customers across all rate classes. Staff developed this recommendation through a thoughtful approach that balanced providing the best value that we can for our customers today, while also ensuring that our four-year-old organization maintains a strong financial foundation so we can serve our customers for many years to come. Before we dive into the details of our proposed rate decrease for 2024, I want to take a moment to highlight the rate development policy this body approved in late 2022. 
the rate development policy acts as our North Star for our rate development process. As such, we have committed to develop rates in a way that provides simplicity and transparency. As a public agency, it is of the utmost importance to us to set rates that recover the costs associated with the procurement of electricity and ensure that we have enough in reserves to create stability for our young organization. I'd now like to turn it over to Lucas Uto, our Senior Director of Data Analytics and Customer Operations to talk about our proposed rates and how we arrived at our recommendation. He will be accompanied by Jen LeBron, our Director of Public Affairs. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Good evening, Chair LaCarvo and board members. Uh, my name is Lucas Uto. I'm the Senior Director of Data Analytics and Customer Operations. This evening, I'll be presenting on staff recommendation with regards to San Diego Community Power 2024 rates. Um, staff is proposing a significant rate decrease uh, for our customers in this year relative to our existing load approved rates that came into effect as of February 1st of last year. Um, the reduction of winter rates to about 13 cents per kilowatt hour and summer rates to 19 cents per kilowatt hour will definitely provide a double digit year over year financial relief for all of our customers. Next slide, please. So this slide here captures the rates that we're recommending and the fact that they do represent on an average 17.7% .7 year over year decrease in electricity generation rates across all of our customer classes. If the board approves the staff recommendation tonight, the proposed rates will yield a month over month decrease of approximately 23.2% compared to rates in the winter from last year, beginning as of February 1st of this year through May of this year. We recognize that increasing prices and stagnant wages put pressure on families. Just this past year alone, a record 527,000. 494 individuals receive CalFresh benefits in San Diego County. That is approximately 16% of the 3.3 million people who call our region home, who struggle to balance their bills while putting food on the table. While not all of those half a million people are our customers, a significant chunk of them are. It is part of the reason we see it as our duty, as Karen alluded to, to lower prices as much as we can, while still being financially responsible so that we can remain the kind of competition in the region that drives down prices for years to come. Next, please. This slide here essentially captures the exact same mechanics, but for power 100 customers, so customers that are getting our 100% renewable carbon-free product. It's the same story here as well. Our rates are coming down uh, by and large in the proposed rates this year relative to what they were last year. Next slide, please. So um, in terms of the average percentages, um, it's double digits across the board for both summer and winter. And what that translates to is for a typical residential customer, they should see an additional $5 a month charge on Power 100, which as the board knows, is 100% renewable and covered free service in comparison to our base service power off. When compared to sdg e base product, this translates to roughly a $10 differential on average for a residential customer. Next slide, please. So why are rates coming down? Um, gas prices, obviously, drive power prices, since gas is typically the marginal resource. Um, as articulated by sdg and &E in their recent filing in December, that gave rise to their rates currently in effect as of January 1st of 2024, they actually attribute their electric generation rates decreasing primarily due to lower cost of purchasing power, seemingly as a function of decline in power and gas forwards for 2024. So this slide here encompasses that reality in the sense that on the left, you can see how 
precipitously natural gas prices have dropped in recent months. And this has allowed for both SDG and E and SDCP to lower total generation rates year over year from last year to this year. If you recall last year around this time, gas prices went off the roof. And this year we're seeing the reverse of fortunes accordingly. What this means is um, in terms of the portfolio mix, obviously our two organizations have distinct different portfolios. Um, we have a lot more renewable power as part of our mix, which means natural gas does not have the exact same impact in terms of the lowering of our procurement costs, similar to the competition. Next slide, please. We've heard a lot about resource adequacy. Now let's talk about it a little bit. Um, as the board knows, uh, due to a number of market forces, supply chain delays due to COVID, obviously, uh, which delayed renewable resource development, broadly speaking, increased component costs, as well as grid interconnection delays and high market prices external to Kaiso, um, the increased demand for in-state renewable energy. And short-term renewable energy prices have essentially increased precipitously over the last couple of years, and likewise for resource adequacy. This definitely results in extreme tight RA market, which you've heard that story uh, a number of times from, from our power services team, as well as our regulatory and legislative team. But we know as we build resources um, and those come online, we will reduce our exposure to short-term capacity, as well as market, uh, so short-term capacity markets. However, in the meantime, we are subject to extremely high RRA prices, which comprise a significant share of our power supply costs. Until those resources come online, our young organization will be exposed to the market, a risk that our power services team is mitigating by signing numerous power and capacity purchase agreements that we anticipate coming alive within the next five years. And what, the, what those projects will do essentially is to help us curb these costs in the long run. And you will hear a few of these agreements being presented to the board later on this evening. Next slide, please. Same story for renewable. You can see that prices have increased astronomically year over year, and those are playing a, a role in terms of our cost exposure, broadly speaking. Next slide, please. So what did staff evaluate as far as scenarios are concerned? We obviously wanted to set rates that achieve dual goal of giving our customers maximum rate relief, while at the same time also providing a foundation for our long-term growth and financial stability. When we entered into this rating, uh, rate setting cycle, we evaluated a number of different options to recommend to the board. The first was to examine what kind of a rate decrease we could provide to our customers if we opted to keep everything status quo. This would mean that we would be about 8 to 11% more expensive than the competition, even though it would be building up our reserves a lot faster. With this option, we could have added $250 million to our reserves. Well, that would be a great thing for the bottom line of a for-profit company. Our not-for-profit public agency recognized immediately that would be a non-starter for our customers. Next, we examined what would happen if we applied the 23.3% year-over-year -year decrease year-round, which is equivalent to 1.5% discount in both summer and winter versus scg &E's current rates. While this was a choice that was very tempting on the surface, it was an option that ultimately staff deemed would not be fiscally prudent. By providing that deep discount to our rates, it would require us to decimate our reserves to the tune of about $100 million, and thus jeopardizing our mission and ability to serve our customers over the long run. The scenario that staff is recommending tonight provides a year-over-year, -year, double-digit percentage decrease 
in rates for all customer classes from last year to this year and puts us at parity with the competition immediately this winter, but that also creating a 15% premium between us and scg and in the summer if their current bundle commodity rates remain unchanged, obviously. The overall drop rate comparison impact of the staff recommended scenario results in total average monthly costs that is approximately 3% higher for power on versus scg and &E, and 6% higher for power 100 versus scg and &E's bleed spot. As the board recalls, scg and &E no longer offers an equivalent 100% renewable carbon-free service simply because it was cost prohibitive for them. The staff recommended scenario ensures that we, mean, we maintain fiscal responsibility, allowing us to continue serving our customers over the long run while meeting all of our strategic financial goals that the board has set for organization. Next slide, please. So why do we need these resources? Um, that's the question that I think all of us are asked. Um, as the board knows, it is critical for our young organization to continue building our reserves. <laughs> As a four-year-old agency, we need to establish healthy reserves to help us obtain a credit rate, which we can then use to negotiate better pricing, terms on power purchase agreements, and leverage those funds to provide rate stability and customer programs for years to come. Next slide, please. So this actually, this slide encapsulates the reserve strategic goals that SDCP has made thanks to our financial discipline in our short history. You can see up top that we did hit our initial 90 day cash on hand target in 2023, and we would actually be marching towards our 180 day goal swiftly with no changes to the current rate, so keeping everything status quo. However, we realize that our customers need savings today. Now, our 90-day reserve plus progress we've made has given us the opportunity to change the pace of our reserve build while maintaining sound financial practices. With the rates that we're proposing today, we anticipate reaching our 180-day cash on hand goal by sometime around October of 2025. Next slide, please. This slide here encapsulate the number of rate changes from a commodity perspective only, not necessarily the delivery and or uh, transmission. Those are, are a lot to track. Uh, we're, we provide the commodity and in quantifying how many rate changes we've seen over the past six, six years since, you know, since we, we, we came about, you can see that there is in the past, especially in 2021, there were a lot more rate changes on competition, but ever since we've come into the marketplace, I think things have stabilized quite a bit. And again, the, the, the number one thing that we hear from our customers is stability, right? Folks want to plan their budgets and they want to have stability in terms of what rates they can expect to encounter for their parties. Next slide, please. So what does what is the overall staff recommendation? This slide encapsulates that uh, for the most part. And in conclusion, um, I would like on behalf of staff, thank the board of directors for participating today. We recognize that this is a very important decision ahead of you. We recommend that you approve these rates to provide as much relief as possible for our customers while preserving our strong financial foundation and create predictability as well as certainty not only in 2024, but years to come. This concludes my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Lucas, uh, Jen, and um, our CEO, Karen. Uh, as our CEO said, this is probably the single most important decision we make uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, and it is a challenging decision, uh, but I note that we step up to meet that challenge and we do it at a public setting where everybody can look and watch and hear. And I wanna thank you, Lucas, for taking a very complicated conversation and boiling it down to its essence 
uh, for the presentation today. I think it really helps the board members and I know there were briefings uh, as well. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, to me, there were two important things going forward. One was to protect our reserves uh, because it is critical to our ongoing stable operation and getting that credit rating, uh, which will really enhance the good work that everybody does in each of our uh, departments in the organization. Um, but also to uh, respect the fact that ratepayers can also be hurting. Um, we saw that last year when there was a that spike in natural gas and how many people fell behind. And so in being able to thread that needle and getting the right rate setting at this time that balances those two. And of course, all the other levers that go into a very complicated calculation. So for all those that prepared complicated models and spreadsheets and worked and refined and rethought about it, thank you for that very, very good work over the past few months. We can't do this without you. Um, so at this time, I will first check for public comment. Megan, do we have any public comment? We do not have any public comment. All right. So I'll turn it over to the board members for comments. We, of course, will need a motion. And I see the vice chair has her hand up. Vice Chair Lawson Reamer. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I first of all just really want to echo um Chairman Lujava's comments, how uh, incredibly complicated this is. Um, and how just staff the the team just did a really, really good job on uh, kind of figuring out what the trade-offs and, and the options are. Um, you know, and I also think we all share the commitment um to make sure that ratepayers are not unduly burdened um, and that we are doing everything we possibly can to reduce rates um, and to make um, energy more affordable for people in San Diego County, uh, both today and in the future. And that was has always been uh, the core of the mission of San Diego Community Power. Um, and that is about <clears throat> today, absolutely. But it's also about uh, building for tomorrow so that we're able to continue to provide low rates and hopefully lower and lower rates as time goes on. Um, so I do I agree that this is a, a, a share, an important balancing act between the reserves um, and uh, the, you know, the rate payers and getting our rates as low as possible. But I actually put out there that I, I don't think it's about one or the other. I think it's about ensuring that we can offer energy and as inexpensively and affordably as possible for people in San Diego County for long into the future. Uh, and it's just a question of how do we get there? Um, it's not, and not just about doing it once, but it's about doing that over time. Um, so I, 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 I'm committed to that as, as the guiding principle. Um, so with that said, I actually just had a question for staff. Um, what the piece that I, that I wasn't completely clear on um, is whether it, we know acknowledging that we might see um, scg &E, uh, shift rates as we come into the summer, um, whether we would have the capacity or the ability to also uh, take a second look at our rates uh, six months from now or um, if that was to occur. Thank you very much for that question, board member. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. One of the things about the rates here, we will not speculate on whether or not SDG will be changing its rates. We know historically that there have been some mid-year changes. One of the things that is important to note is that this body can bring back a rate setting opportunity at its purview. And so should the board decide at a future meeting date to discuss rates, staff would be more than happy to support that. Thank you. Sorry, would you repeat that? I'm sorry, the, the, the last sentence, I didn't fully understand. No problem. Uh, basically, at the direction of the board, another item could be brought forward to discuss rates and a potential rate adjustment at any point in the year. So in other words, the staff will not bring rates forward again, but a board, uh, the board could, if we wanted to, bring uh, ask staff to bring uh, discussion of rates forward again at some point during the year. That's correct, board member. We would be more than happy at the board's direction to bring that item back. So we don't need to feel like we're making our vote today. And if things change drastically and in ways that, um, yeah, if things change very, very drastically, we don't need to feel like we can't revisit this. That's correct. 
Okay, that's extremely helpful. Thank you. That concludes your remarks. Uh, go next to uh, Director McCann. Thank you very much, um, Chair. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Dr. Washington and his team, uh, Lucas and Jen for being here. And really as the uh, Karen said, Karen Burns said, this is such an important uh, item that we need to make sure that we're doing well. And I think staff has done a superb job at bringing us the, the, the correct options. And I support staff's recommendation. Um, I think it gives us that balance of being able to protect our customers by providing competitive rates uh, for energy and creates price stability uh, for our consumers in the future. Uh, it maintains our long-term financial goals of protecting our reserves and setting the stability uh, and setting us up for a good future credit rating. And it continues us on the path of the San Diego Community Power at being able to make sure that we're looking at how we're using renewable energy. Um, so with that, I'll be happy to make the motion uh, to approve the staff recommendation uh, for the rates. So moved. All right. Uh, we have a motion by uh, Member McCann to move the staff recommendation. Do I have any other comments? Um, I will second the motion and just add the comment that um, I know how much hard work this takes and how many eyes go into it and just your critical thinking to get us to a point where we're adhering to our policy and also giving our rate payers a, a really decent deal. And it's just so refreshing to be able to see our rates lower by double digits because I think this is the only utility that I sit on that we're doing, the, that we're actually having to do the opposite. So um, thanks again. And um, I'm happy that we are giving our customers some clarity into the next year and planning their resource management. Any other comments? Uh, member Aguirre. Thank you, Chair. Just very briefly, I um, want to echo what's been said. And as a member of the FRMC, we want to make sure that we plan for the long term of a financial uh, viability and 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 uh, resilience. And I just want to appreciate Ms. Um, Burns' comment about us being the most expensive city and the fact that we're able to provide um, affordable rates from sources of re renewable energy is, is is tremendously important. So thank you for that. Uh, Member Yamani. Mr. Chairman, just a shout out to Mr. Aaron Lu and Mr. <laughs> Tim Manklikmok. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, not seeing any other hands raised. Um, Megan, uh, please call the vote. On we have a motion by Director McCann and a second by Director Henze to move the staff recommendation. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Yes. Director Henze, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Geary, how do you vote? Aye. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair Lawson Weimer, how do you vote? Aye. Chair LaCava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all directors voting yes. All right. Thank you to the board members. Thank you to CEO. Thank you to all the staff, uh, CFO, and all that work that it took to pull this together. Um, it's a big moment for the year. Yeah. So we'll move on to item 15, which is approval of acceptance, appropriation, and expenditure of grant fund from the California Department of Food and Agriculture for the Healthy Refrigeration Grant Fund. The uh, Allison Sherlock and Collins and Bluey will be presenting this item. Take it away. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Members of the board, I'm uh, Colin Santilli, Director of Programs. I'm joined here by Allison Spurlock, our Senior Program Associate. And we're here to present uh, you and ask for recommendation. Uh, there's a slightly updated recommendation and that more appropriately reflects what we're asking your approval on tonight. And that is to adopt a resolution authorizing the Chief Executive Officer to accept, appropriate, and spend CDFA grant funds for the Healthy Refrigeration Grant Program in the amounts not to exceed $710,000 to execute a grant agreement with CDFA so we can expect to move such grant funds and to negotiate and execute amendments, extensions, or renewals of such grant agreements. 
and you take all necessary action to administer, monitor, manage, and ensure compliance with the grant agreement and negotiate and execute with third parties to implement the grant agreement for use of grant funds. One more time. <laughs> Next slide, please. That is quite a recommendation. <laughs> yeah, I'll be very brief here on the background and then I'll hand off uh, to Alpha, who leads or will be leading this for us. Uh, so, back in May of 2023, I presented at the board meeting a series of pilot project concepts that uh, we were uh, seeking feedback on and also uh, offered some budget to approve um, in this current fiscal year's budget. One of which was this Energy Star refrigerator and freezer upgrade pilot project. Um, we later uh, identified grant funding for that project. Uh, in July, we submitted an application to the California Department of Food and Agriculture to, to fund this grant project. Um, and I'm going to pass it off a little bit more in detail about that. Thanks, Juan. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the Healthy Refrigeration Grant Program. And so the purpose of the program is to improve access to healthy foods in underserved communities while promoting California-grown agriculture. And to do this, CDFA provides energy-efficient refrigeration and freezer equipment to corner stores and small businesses in low-income and low-food access areas to help them expand their selection of fresh uh, fruit that they stock. And the next slide, please. So at the end of December, we received the exciting news that SDCP received a $710,000 grant, which was the second biggest grant in the state out of the 103 recipients and the only CCA to receive a grant award. Um, we will use the grant funding to start a pilot program that Colin just talked about in our service territory to provide equipment to stores and to offer additional technical assistance offerings. And then the stores will use the equipment to stock California grown foods. I also wanted to note that we only have high level details to share tonight since we're waiting on the grant agreement from CDFA, which could take up to 90 days. And so we plan on bringing back more details in the future when we bring back updates to the week. Next slide. Um, so here's a high level summary of the program's eligibility. And so corner stores and small businesses are eligible to participate as long as they sell or donate food to low income or low food access areas. And so we included on this slide the definitions that CDFA points to for low income and low access areas. And then the map on the right highlights what areas of San Diego are generally considered low, low food access areas or food deserts. And I wanted to highlight that we got this map from the County of San Diego's website, and they are already doing some work in this space and have some programming that addresses food deserts. And they also previously received a grant from the same CDFA program to help enroll stores in the Healthy Refrigeration Grant Program. And so we're really looking forward to collaborating with them in the future um, to provide an opportunity for stores and all of our member jurisdictions to participate in this program. And so on my last slide, if the board adopts the resolution tonight, our next steps are to execute the grant agreement, which we are targeting to do by the end of the first quarter of this year. And then we're anticipating launching the program in the second or third quarter of this year. And then after we execute the grant agreement, we will begin developing program materials, such as a more detailed program manual that outlines more detailed eligibility. Um, issuing solicitations is necessary to contract subconsultants for some additional technical assistance offerings that we might offer, and then also to begin program outreach. So that's all we have for you tonight. Turn it back to the chair. All right. Thank you for the presentation. I think it's another indicator of the strength of the organization's your ability to apply and actually secure grants. So others are recognizing the good work that uh, Community Power is doing. Uh, Megan, do we have any public comment on this item? We do not. So I will turn it over to the board members for comments and a motion. Uh, Director Aguirre. I'm happy to move the item and just a quick comment on very Grateful to staff for the work as a city. I didn't even need to look at the map where food, food desert and Imperial Beach. Um, very excited about this opportunity. I would second that, Mr. Chairman. All right, we have a second. Bonnie. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mem uh, Director Aaron. Yeah, thanks for this. This is great. I'm going to support it. Uh, just wanted to flag for staff um, when you're, you know, as you're uh, thinking through outreach and everything, different organizations in San Diego, like the the Neighborhood Market Association that would be useful to, to reach out to. And there's a California Grocers Association too. 
uh, that might be a, a shortcut to to, um, to getting in front of some of the um, uh, businesses that you want to uh, uh, make these funds available to. Thank you. Thanks. Seeing no other comments, uh, we have a motion by Director Geary and a second by Director Yamani to move the staff recommendation. Megan, can you please call the roll? Director Yamani, how, uh, how do you vote? Aye. Director Hinzi, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Geary, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair Lawson Ringer, how do you vote? Aye. Chair LaCava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all directors voting yes. Thank you very much, staff, for that good work. We'll move on to item 16, which is an update to our flex load strategy. Steve Timothy Treadwell will present this item. Thank you, Chair. Good evening. Um, I'm here tonight to present an update on a flex load strategy that we've been working on for the last few months um, that will uh, span across our program suite as we begin to build out. So, um, I guess I want to start by orienting the board to what we're hoping to achieve. Um, the, the flex load strategy is an opportunity for us to, to integrate in um, smart grid concepts into our program so that we can, we can build out uh, and expand the size and value of flex load resources and ultimately deliver bill savings to program participants. And at the end of the day, reduce our cost and risk around energy procurement and RA, so we can reduce cost um, to all uh, rates to all uh, ratepayers. And we're going to achieve that um, through two objectives: a short-term objective, which we're we're doing today, which is an assessment of the market and implementation of strategies to incorporate flexibility into our program suite, and over the long-term um, design and implementation of these strategies in the portfolio to build out the resource. Next slide. So there's a lot of different names for the same thing. And I, I wanted to orient the board to this, the concept of flexibility. Um, you'll hear load management, demand management, demand flexibility. They're all basically the same thing. What we're talking about is the ability to, to move load around, um, shift or shed load uh, to meet the needs of customers in the grid. Uh, next slide. So this tool has emerged as a, as a pretty important policy tool for the state. Um, load flexibility provides a lot of benefits um, for California's energy and climate goals. So um, load flexibility at its most important allows us to move customer usage to when intermittent renewable producing electricity. Um, they also allow us to do electrify new loads, building electrification, transportation, transportation electrification, and do that in a way that minimizes the need to invest in grid um, uh, infrastructure improvements and new generation. And finally, grid flexibility, load flexibility allows us to respond to increasingly um, prevalent and extreme weather events like heat waves and fires. Um, so given the importance of this policy tool, uh, state regulators at both the CPUC and, and the California Energy Commission have been implementing a number of um, initiatives across proceedings and rulemakings, including Title 24 building code uh, updates, changes to flexible load standards um, and load management standards that impact load serving entities like um, SDCP. Um, and the CEC recently came out with uh, a staff report where they assessed the market for flexibility in the state, which is currently at about 3.5 gigawatts, and they want to double that by 2030. Um, and in the process, created this, this framework I have on the slide um, to identify and document the different types of load flex that, that we can achieve through programs. Uh, next slide. So what does this mean for us? Kind of zooming from you know, the state level down to SDCP. So for a load serving entity like us, load flexibility provides um, support to reduce our energy procurement costs and our resource addicts costs. So we can move load to away from um, on peak periods, reducing our, our power procurement needs. Um, and we can increase consumption when there's low and negative pricing in the wholesale market. Um, we can also help reduce demand and the associated resource adequacy obligation. Um, so by modifying load on the front end, uh, that adjusts our forecast that goes to the state, which um, reduces our obligation for resource adequacy on the back end. Uh, next slide. And a number of CCAs are already implementing these programs. So this data is from the end of Q3 2023. 
about half of the state CCAs currently have an active or planned CCA, or an active or planned flex load program. Um, you know, not, unsurprisingly, the the older CCAs like MCE, CPA, and East Bay, not AVA, um, have the, the largest program suite. And how they're attacking this kind of varies from daily load shifting programs to event-based DR efficiency and real-time pricing. Uh, next slide. And we get flexibility from uh, DERs, distributed energy resources. I won't read the definition for you. It's it's a pretty expansive um, uh, term. I think the the operative word here is distributed. So if you look at that graphic on the bottom, it these are resources that are interconnected to the system downstream of substations. So they're on the distribution side. They're at customer's um, premise behind their meter or connected to the same, the same voltage. So, uh, next slide. And DERs are ubiquitous. So these assets exist across our customer base. And ultimately we plan to engage all of these customer segments and build out programs and um, achieve flexibility um, across each type. Next slide. So as we launch our program portfolio, um, you all have already heard about the SD-REN proposal that went in um, at the beginning of this year. And we have a number of other programs and pilots planned. What we're hoping to do with the strategy is build out a framework that can be integrated and scaled with our program um, suite so that we have this large and valuable resource that we can exercise to reduce our, our cost structures. Uh, next slide. And to do that, we've identified a number of, of integration strategies um, across our programs. Uh, I won't go into the details here, but you know it, it varies from um, selecting the specific assets and vendors that we want to include, uh, favoring those that have um, that have software integrations and the ability for us to to um, control the the assets remotely. Um, incentive structures that engage customers and keep them enrolled and participating over the long term. Um, setting up uh, terms and conditions and legal arrangement with customers so that we can um, we can respond to changes in the market and changes in um, our needs of those resources over time. And then finally, uh, delivering technical assistance to local governments and to contractors who are not familiar with this technology and have the ability to either be impediments or advocates for it as we move forward. Um, probably the most important concept here is, is that of the DERMS, a distributed energy resource management system. So a DERMS is a software layer that really sits at the middle of um, of flexible load. It allows us to take into account um, factors happening in the market, prices, weather, our load forecast, um, our customer assets and their preferences, and optimize those resources and provide an interface between that optimization engine all the way down to the asset in the customer's home, whether it's a water heater, a thermostat, an electric vehicle. Um, and uh, dispatch those resources and optimize them for a particular use case that we need, like reducing our, our peak capacity for resource adequacy, for example. Um, and, and one thing, the last thing I'll say about the germs, it's, I think is important is there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of growth in this market right now. A lot of people are very excited about it. Um, and there's a lot of variability in the products available. Um, and it, it's easy to over or under buy. So we want to be very aware of that in our, our procurement process for the DERMs and make sure that it's making a, a wise decision for rate payers and getting what we need for the use cases that we're interested in. Um, so these next few slides I'll go through really quickly and then wrap up. Um, we're proposing a three-phase strategy here. So looking at procuring our base DERMs uh, this, this year, starting the procurement process now um, and moving into contracting in fiscal year 24, 25. Um, to have the, the base resource that will serve as a backbone of our programs and prepare us for uh, broad-based um, control of assets. Um, this would run parallel to our battery program and a managed charging program. Next slide. As we move into um, phase two in 2025, we would aggregate batteries up under the same uh, unified control structure, which would give us the ability to do further rate optimization and deliver greater savings for customers. And then finally, in phase three, um, roll the electric vehicles under the same control platform um, and scale. And my last slide is give you a sense of how 
these this initiative kind of overlaps and overlays with the other program work that we're doing, um, including the RIN, building electrification, um, storage programs, and managed charging. Um, I think I'd like to focus your attention to the bottom left corner of the table. You see the orange clouds there. Those are the, the software procurement that we would be doing, um, which are necessary to prepare for the 2025 launch of our, our larger program suite so that we have the IT architecture and the internal kind of operational capability to scale those programs and begin building them in the space. Great, thank you for the presentation. Uh, Megan, do we have any public comment on this item? We do not. This is an information item, and without any objection, we will simply receive and file, but I will turn it over to the board members for any questions or comments. Not hearing any? <laughs> <laughs> Very technical. Terms. Cloud in any way. I also got that. Terms, yes. Uh, we'll look forward to more presentations as you start to drill down and come up with specific proposal for us to uh, relate to. But thank you for that. Great, thank uh, you. And um, I wish you luck in trying to boil it down to <laughs> about a third grade level. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what we did. when I started. <laughs> uh, thank you for this is really important stuff. I don't want to make light, but uh, thank, you. thank you for that good work. So we'll now move on to item 17, which is approve Pelican's Jaw Solar uh, Power Purchase Agreement. I'll turn it over to Mr. Vosberg to present this item. Great, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening, directors. We have a few items here. Uh, here in consideration from the Power Services team. Uh, these first few, Kenny Key, our director of power contracts, negotiated uh, available tonight. So I'll be presenting on his behalf. I'm the usual joke. If you don't like them, they're his fault. Um, I'll turn it over to a couple okay. more staff members to CK on right here uh, for items 20 and 21 as well. Um, so first here with item 17, the job of the game. Um, I think we're pretty familiar at this point with the role PPA to play in our power portfolio. Um, obviously, we want to be renewable as soon as possible. Um, obviously, building on all the presentation that Lucas gave, um, at least the long-term contracts, um, and Obviously, to be incremental and to uh, you know, reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, but also for our uh, financial liability to make sure we have long term stability and cheap rates. Um, you know, these all uh, fit that as well. So, uh, you know, all of these lead to uh, our long term, you know, long term viability, long term renewability goals. Um, and as we have new steel on the ground to support them, of course, there are a few years out because that's the, the development cycle and timing that we face. We also have regulatory obligations. Uh, as well for new steel uh, and for new capacity that's permanent and renewable. Next slide, please. So Pelican's jaw um, came to us through a solicitation last year. Uh, it's about it's 226 megawatts uh, share that we're purchasing uh, of solar capacity with 118 megawatts of four hour battery capacity. It's in Kern County. Uh, you can see the maps uh, there uh, on the left side. So as we evaluate projects, obviously we for projects in San Diego County or Imperial County, uh, but Southern California is our second tier. So it's in the second tier for project evaluation. And you can see the, uh, the star right there as well for its uh, proxy location. It's now in Valley. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so from this, for this uh, project, we're going to all attributes. Uh, so this is a uh, fully bundled um, project and, and, and contract. So we're getting real, real energy, real attributes, uh, capacity, and the full dispatch from the battery facility as well. 15 year term, uh, and the product will be online in 2027. Uh, and of course, we have all the standard protections that are going to be or noise. Next slide, please. Uh, our analysis here, um, so again, this is similar to a lot of the recent PPA that we've seen, so hopefully, a lot of this analysis is similar. Um, but it's, again, it's another, uh, another great profession in our portfolio that allows it to be renewable. Right, a lot of renewable energy, uh, you know, in 2020, potentially 2026, definitely 2027, um, will help us also meet compliance obligations. Uh, pricing, as we reviewed with the energy contracts working group, it is uh, confidential, but this is being released, uh, again, as confirmed through all the solicitation we wrote last, uh, last year. Um, and also, um, uh, SPE uh, is a well known and, and reputable um, uh, developer that we're partnering with for this project as well. So, we're excited to work with them. Uh, workforce wise, uh, summer here is 400 construction jobs, three jobs, 
uh, they do have a uh, PLA, and you can see all of the uh, labor associations that are working on the air. They've also committed to a $500,000 um, contribution to our community benefit fund. Uh, we discussed that before as part of our energy project valuation criteria, uh, and that will be uh, directed again by SDCP uh, and through all process. And I think that's it for the overview of that project. For all that project. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, Megan, do we have any public comment? We do not. I'll turn it over to the board members for comments, and we will need a motion uh, on the staff recommendation. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to make the motion. So move. I'll second the motion. Uh, okay, so we have a motion by Director McCann, a second by Director Hinsey. Do we have any other comments? Uh, thank you for the good work and tracking these down and negotiating these deals. I know that doesn't often come easy, uh, but I appreciate uh, trying to get that geographic proximity to the degree that we can. Um, and of course the, the workforce component uh, as well. So with that, we, again, we have a motion by Director McCann, a second by Director Kinsey. And Megan, please call the roll. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Aye. Director Hinty, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Geary, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair Lawson Reamer, how do you vote? Aye. Chair LaCava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all directors voting yes. Thank you for that. Uh, and now we'll move on to item 18, which is to approve the SD US Development LLC Resource Adequacy Agreement. And we'll turn it over again to Mr. Boss. Bad news, you're stuck with me for another one. I'm going to put a couple here. Um, <laughs> before we get into this item specifically, just want to preface 18, 19, and 20. Um, I don't want to make this a, a regulatory overview or an infection process overview, but I, I want to note um, that there are a slightly different flavor of agreement that we're signing here. These, uh, the next three deals are contingent upon uh, perceiving full capacity deliverability status. Um, or we all just fall asleep uh, talking about the, the, the uh, complexities of that. Um, I will just note that, again, this is a Kaiser interconnection study process to make sure that these resources can deliver uh, during the uh, hours of peak stress. Um, and so, it, again, the, the, the procurement process is going to change over the last few years to be that you wouldn't you know, to have deliverability status, which allows it to sell uh, RA research accuracy, which we've heard about before. Um, now, the process um, advantages or gives priority to resources that have contracts. And so, as we identify projects that we like that are a little farther out, we can have to you. We can give them priority uh, and work with them if, yeah, if they have a signed contract. So, again, these next three are FCDS contingent. So, we'll commit to them, um, ho hoping that they're successful in that process. If they are, we'll get the signed contract with them we like. If not, then we we even turn it and walk away. But it will go in kind of eyes wide open to only know that here for project for, for items 18, 19, 21. So um, this one you had those storage um, also been developed by SPE, uh, the previous item. Oh, and I want you to note also that can you negotiate this one? Um, this kind of SCS contingent process that we've picked up the last couple of well, few weeks, couple months, um, it's been a huge effort, huge lift on, on my team uh, around, around the holidays and the shutdown, rate setting. Um, and it's been a huge lift while we're negotiating a bunch of other deals as well. So I do want to get the power to the team, but a couple of you guys here tonight, but just in general, the whole, the whole team has done a whole lot of work, especially around, around time when most people try to try to do a little less work. We've, we've been doing a whole lot more. Um, and again, uh, it also puts a lot of, you know, strength to even some of the, the folks who are uh, just doing some of the more the behind the scenes work about negotiating these deals. Um, it's a lot of stress on the whole team as well. So we did want to make sure I give a shout out um, before I forget. Uh, so this contract is uh, Athos Storage. Um, you can see the site there. Uh, this is being developed. Um, SB Energy has existing uh, new energy there. You can see there are big uh, solar arrays already on site. Um, so as we developed previously, uh, they had their connection available at that site. They developed that site previously, but now they're adding storage. Uh, so we're with them uh, for uh, this 400 megawatt. Uh, storage and insulation in Riverside County, and you can see the map there, um, just out of San Diego and, and Imperial counties, uh, but just on the, on the south side. So just open border into uh, into tier two in our evaluation criteria in the color of black. Um, so this uh, uh, this deal, again, a little bit of a uh, flexible strategy here. This is a five-year um, contract term that we're committing to. 
I think so again, the FCDS contingent once they receive FCDS, then we have a five year deal for RA. But there's also that optionality for us to, to negotiate broader term mm -hmm. uh, as well for a full toll. Um, you know, it doesn't really make sense to negotiate full deals with contingent deals. But so what we do is a full a commitment here. If they achieve it, then we have some amount of time to negotiate uh, and, and, and kind of have a first look and then first rights. Uh, to, to negotiate a full deal uh, if it does come to come to pass. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so again, same thing here. Um, similar, similar themes, right? Um, leasing is confidential, but this pricing is keeping it competitive by value. When you have a long-term resource, resource addition to a portfolio, are not only good, good for the portfolio, but also uh, possibility of investment well going forward. And again, that is the energy uh, we're well known uh, from. Next slide, please. So workforce development, there's a, like, a very similar slide also, 50, uh, 50 ish construction jobs um, in LA. Uh, and they also, um, again, is, is a big city on the site, so no significant impacts to the local area. Great. Thank you, Mark. With that uh, meeting, do we have any public comment on this site? Yeah. Uh, so I'll turn it over to the board members uh, for comments. This does require a motion to uh, accept the staff recommendation. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to make the motion to approve. So move. Second, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion to move the staff recommendation by Director McCann, a second by Director Yamani. Any other comments by the board? Seeing none. Uh, thank you for the good work and the clarification and setting the stage for 18, 19, and 20 so that we understand. Um, and do we get involved in the conversation about their ability to connect through CalAXO? Great question. Um, we're involved with the process monitoring process. It's sort of something we take into consideration um, for reviewing projects. Uh, and we are engaged both at the UC and the ISO um, and no stakeholder proceedings. Sure. Uh, they're, they're doozies, I'll say. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but we are, yes. Okay, fair enough. All right, Megan, please uh, call them. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Aye. Director Hinzi, how do you vote? Yes. Director Peter, how do you vote? Yes. Director Aguirre, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair Lawson Reamer, how do you vote? Aye. Chair LaCava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries. All directors voting yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the next one, item 19 approved energy storage service agreement for the Chula Vista Energy Center 2 project. Byron? Yeah, the last one for me. I know the last one for me, and then, and then we'll get some fresh faces up here. Um, so again, this one we can key uh, negotiated, uh, but it's similar region here. So it's the Chula Vista Energy Center to um, the standalone uh, battery storage facility being built by Wellhead, uh, like a company. Um, I believe this report place is also a um, gas plant that they currently own, like using an actually be transferring over to uh, to battery. So. Um, <laughs> You can see locations uh, in tier one in uh, San Diego County in the list itself. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so similar, similar in some ways here, but still compared to the last one, this is actually a full call with all resource access benefits um, and full dispatchability of the resource, about 50 megawatts, um, just about 50 megawatts and fixed for a 15-year term, should be online in 2026. Uh, but again, as we talked about the deliverability, it's FCDS contingent. So uh, should they achieve it? Great, we have a deal. If not, uh, we all walk, walk away and done the best. Um, so again, this is an especially attractive project um, as it's in our local area, not only local but you know, also local reliability and, and, and reduces um, uh, reduces emissions in, in the local area as well. Um, this is right price competitive as uh, all these projects that we bring to you. <laughs> Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, here if we hadn't uh, confirmed that as well, uh, and also helped with the regulatory requirements. Um, so, well, his community is in, in labor. Um, they're still uh, you know, the kind of the rest of that will involve uh, union labor. Um, it will bring about 130 jobs to the area, and then also have that on site. Um, it, it's in a, also in a community concern. Uh, and so, we'll, again, we'll this place, as I mentioned, the uh, the gas fire cogeneration with clean energy storage that should reduce local emissions, uh, also provide cleaner and more, more jobs in that community. Uh, and they're also providing scholarships as well. I was going to get into uh, All right, thank you for the presentation on that one. Uh, being in, any public comment? And no public comment. So we'll turn it again over to the board members for comments, and we will need a motion to move the staff recommendation. 
Mr. Chair, since this is in Chula Vista, I'm excited about that. And uh, we'll go ahead and make the motion. So moved. All right. A second. All right. So we have a motion by Director McCann and a second by Director Aguirre's. And seeing no other comment, uh, Reagan, please call the vote. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Aye. Director Hindi, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Aguirre, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Director Lawson Reamer, how do you vote? Aye. Director LaCava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with all directors voting yes. Thank you. Thank you all. I'll thank introduce you. CK and Andre. Thanks, Andre. Okay, thank you. So, item 20 is approved at Hikata, Grid, Scaffell, I can't believe a complicated name, storage <laughs> uh, LLC resource adequacy agreement. Turn over to staff. Uh, good evening, directors, Chilakava. Um, Yes, here to approve a 10 year agreement with. The name. Uh, my name is CK Canoe, um, portfolio manager of Howard Services, uh, and the dubious distinction of responsible for our <laughs> next uh, slide, please. Um, you see this um, basically, it's our, our normal slide. Um, I will let you know that um, uh, these slides will all seem similar. So any issues with plagiarism, please don't. Um, <laughs> please don't uh, uh, hold me accountable for that. Um, basically what the slide says is we are trying to be uh, cost conscious, compliant, and um, have certainty around our capacity. Uh, next slide. This, project is located in San Diego County, uh, Ramona, um, and that's uh, a visualization of what we expect it to look like once it's uh, interconnected. And it's inside the Cal ASO, so there's no issues of it being out of state as well. Uh, next slide. This project is special, obviously, because it will provide, or would be uh, San Diego IV local RA. Uh, the, tenor of the, term, the tenor is 10 years. Right now, the end the TCOD is March 1 of 27, uh, with an incentive for them to come on uh, the summer of 26. Uh, Byron has already explained all of the issues around contingency, and we'll be helping them through that process. And of course, we have no more protections around um, delivering on the milestones. Next slide. This project was a long wait for us to reach our local RA targets, um, also MTR, our midterm reliability. Uh, pricing is competitive as compared to what we've seen in the market. And we feel confident that Hikati Grid can deliver on this project uh, on time. Next slide. Developers said that uh, they expect 50 clean energy jobs during construction with one FTE uh, during main operations. They expect to have a PLA and higher trade apprentices as well, so that young folks who um, want to get into trades in the green economy can do so. Um, and there's the usual line about uh, renewable curtailment that this will decrease and will help us provide power in those times of the day where um, plants with uh, a higher carbon footprint would be used. And this developer is committed to uh, 25,000 in community benefits to benefit uh, SDP, SDCP customers and your constituents. And with that, I leave it for public comments and or questions. All right, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, Megan, do we have any public comment? There is no public comment. All right. Again, I'll turn it over to the board member for comments, and we will leave a motion to move the staff recommendation. Oh, Director Aguirre. Good question. I, I mean, not to be a rent in any of this, but the the, the um, contribution seem a little bit low, the 25000 Anything you can comment on that? Um, I believe we've had different requirements for um, projects that are actually in uh, San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, so I think 
the way we, we've we try to seek more from those who are outside of uh, the local area and um, tried not to, um, I hate to use the word burden, but um, have a smaller uh, contribution for those that are actually in San Diego and you know, directly benefit okay, San Diego, uh, San Diego population. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right, uh, Director uh, Yamai. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, um, I understand that most of the uh, purchases are uh, out of San Diego County, but um, I, I just wanted to appreciate that the staff are making sure that the community benefits are within the San Diego County region, which is, um, you know, and or SDCP is uh, providing those services. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of good comments and questions. Does anybody have an interest in making a motion to move the staff recommendation? Chair, I'll make the motion. So moved. Second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion by Director McCann, a second by Director <laughs> Yamani. And not seeing any other hands raised. Um, and please call the vote, Megan. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Aye. Director Hinsey, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Aguirre, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Director Lawson Reamer, how do you vote? Director Lacaba, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with Director Yamani, Hensi, Parent, Aguirre, McCann, and Lacaba voting yes, and Lawson Reamer is absent. All right. See if he comes back. Uh, move on to item 21, which is a request to approve the Duran Mesa LLC resource advocacy agreement. And we'll turn it over to Andrea for this one. Um, hi, thank you, Chair LaCava and, and board. Um, happy to be the last item on the agenda. Bear with me. I'll try to keep it brief, but of course, we'll entertain any questions you have. Um, this uh, contract is for um, resource adequacy benefits derived from 50 megawatts of wind capacity. Um, first deliveries would come from the operational during Mesa project. That may sound familiar because they're one of our operational um, uh, PPAs we have for a different portion of the, the capacity in our project. Um, then it will then um, after the Sunzia Wind project, which it also sounds familiar as we presented that contract to you back in October. When that project becomes operational, deliveries will shift from Duran Mesa project to Sunzia. Um, both projects are located in New Mexico and Torrance, uh, Lincoln, and San Miguel counties. And this project um, originated from bilateral negotiations as an opportunity for that incremental um, RA came up as, um, you know, Lucas and others did a good job of presenting our desire to lock in, um, you know, fixed RA uh, pricing and incremental capacity to serve our portfolio. Let's um, so as I mentioned, this is for resource adequacy benefits only. Um, pricing is fixed over the duration of the term. The variability in the duration of the term is due to ensuring that we have at least 10 year tenor from deliveries from Zinzia for compliance with mid-term liability requirements from the CPC. Um, and the you know, operational expectations are a bit of a moving target. So that's that's the range that, that we could anticipate there and contemplate in the contract. Uh, the usual performance requirements are there for um, you know, damages in the event that seller fails to deliver um, for unexcused reasons. Next slide. Um, I mentioned will contribute to our M MTR contracting goals. Uh, pricing was competitive, as, as you can imagine. That's why we, we picked up this on a bilateral uh, basis. These next three bullets should look familiar to you as they um, Facts remain from the October Sunzia presentation in terms of patterns engagement with the community and with the workforce for this project. Um, I can say regarding the last bullet on um, letters of support from IBEW that a big press release was announced uh, back just in December last month in PLA that was published uh, the Sunzia transition plan. I believe that's my last slide on this contract. I'm happy to entertain any questions. Great. Thank you for the presentation. 
Uh, Megan, do we have any public comment? There's no public comment. Uh, by the way, I got word that uh, Vice Chair's battery has died, uh, may or may not be able to rejoin the meeting. Um, again, this is also an action item. Uh, so uh, any comments or questions from the board? I need a move, motion to move the staff recommendation. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to make the motion to approve the item, so move. Okay. I'll second. All right, we have a motion by Director McCann, a second by Director Parent. <laughs> Um, and I just have one quick question, the 11 to 13 year. Yeah, that's to um, account for ensuring that we have at least 10 years once Sunzia comes to commercial operations. So the earliest anticipated date is in 2026 for that to happen. Okay. And then it could slip into the end of 2027. So. Okay, very good. All right. Uh, with that, I think still the error on the side of caution. Uh, why don't we call the vote? Megan. Director Yamani, how do you vote? Aye. Director Hindi, how do you vote? Yes. Director Parent, how do you vote? Yes. Director Geary, how do you vote? Yes. Director McCann, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Chair Lawson Reamer, how do you vote? <laughs> Chair Lacava, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries with Director Yamani, Hindi, Parent, Aguirre, McCann, and Chair Lacava voting yes, and Lawson Reamer is absent. All right. Thank you. Well, as was noted, uh, well done, board. We had a very big agenda and got through it. Uh, again, thank you to staff. The good work you do present these items really helps us uh, navigate through all these issues. And with that, we'll turn it over to reports. Uh, we'll start out with a report from our CEO, Aaron Burns. Thank you. Next slide, please. All right, so I wanted to share a few brief updates with you for tonight's report. Last month, we launched our quarterly newsletter, Your Energy Resource, for our customers. This issue featured our new electrification marketplace that's powered by Electrum to bring residential solar and battery storage to our customers. The education hub on our website allows customers to learn about electrification and when they're ready, the marketplace will then connect them with estimates and licensed contractors who can make these projects a reality. Our next issue will be released in February. And for those interested to share this information, and we'd be happy to have that happen uh, with these resources for your constituents. Next slide, please. All right, so last week, the SDCP joined many of you at Mayor Todd Gloria's State of the City address in downtown San Diego. Also, over the weekend, we were able to join with thousands of San Diegans in celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Friday, Dr. Eric Washington, Ashley Rodriguez, Siomales Crespo, and I participated in the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Human Dignity Award Breakfast, hosted by the Jackie Robinson Family YMCA and the YMCA of San Diego County. Our outreach team also tabled at the 42nd annual Martin Luther King Jr. Parade on Sunday, which my family and I also attended and it was wonderful. And a big thank you to the Zeta Sigma Lambda chapter of the Alpha Phi fraternity, the oldest African-American fraternity in the United States whose members coordinate the MLK parade every year. Finally, on Monday morning, Ciao Males Crespo and Ashley Rodriguez on our public affairs team joined Mayor Aguirre and others at the Alliance San Diego's All People Celebration. I'm excited to see how we can continue to enhance our outreach efforts in 2024, and we always appreciate your invitations to represent SDCP in the community. Next slide, please. All right. Finally, I'm so glad you had an opportunity to meet our new team members tonight. As you can see, uh, we are still hiring, although a little bit, a little bit slower pace. Uh, and currently, we are recu recruiting for the following positions: a data scientist, a data engineer, an IT manager, and clerk of the board. I also look forward to welcoming Vera Tiaki, our new general counsel, on February first. With Vera joining the SDCP Dream Team, I'd like to take a moment to thank Ryan Barron and Nicholas Norvell or their support and partnership over the past few years. As outside general counsel, BB&K has been a critical partner in our efforts to provide our local communities with cost-competitive clean energy. Thank you, Ryan and Nick, and the entire BB&K team for your support and counsel. And that 
concludes my report. All right. Well, we still have a general counsel sitting at the table here. So <laughs> do you have anything to report? This is my last and final report, Mr. Chair, board members. Uh, no, I do not. Um, <laughs> I don't have much to report in JP world, but thank you for letting us serve. We've been here since November 2019. So, and then we're along for the ride during the formation stages too. So, um, it's been a real pleasure to be here. I, you know, it means a lot to me to serve all these years, uh, quite frankly. And I, I know you're in good hands because we've gotten a lot of good feedback internally on Bira. So, um, and thank you. It's been a pleasure working with all of you staff, uh, board members, and, and you have a great mission, a great agency. I'm, I'm really happy for all this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, I certainly want to join uh, Karen in thanking you, Ryan, uh, and Nick, and BBK. You were there, like you said, from the very beginning. You were critical to the startup phases, uh, which are never easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, continue to serve uh, as our general counsel here at the board meetings. Either you or Nick were here. You always made that trip down from Orange County. Yeah. We appreciated uh, that time and effort you put into that. Um, and while we say well, goodbye as general counsel, we know that BBK is still engaged to make sure we have a smooth transition. And I certainly appreciate BBK's willingness to do that and guidance. Um, uh, we do enter a new chapter with the board's decision to move from outside council to a new uh, inside council. Looking very forward to uh, Vera joining us um, at our next meeting uh, going forward. So uh, with that, do we have any other comments by our directors? Not seeing any. Uh, okay. Well, that brings us to the end of our agenda. I appreciate everyone's participation. We are adjourned until the next regular meeting of the board of directors. San Diego Community Power, which will be on February 22nd, 2024. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our journey.